Tony are sitting, where did you guys go? Y'all snuck to the back this week. We made them sit up front for so long, they're sneaking to the back. Thank you guys for coming and uh, being a part of tonight. But I've, uh, I let them know that I won't bring them up on stage and embarrass them even more and make them talk more. Tony loves the microphone. You cannot get him to shut up. But other than that, once he gets up here, you just you can't slow him down. Guys, I want to walk through a, a message tonight that specifically comes from the redoing of this home. And, and many of you are living lives that are similar to the situation that you just sh- saw played out on video. And what happens is, and, and you know a little bit of how we met Brandy and Tony, and you know that um, <coughs> through uh, April and Rachel and their ministry and, and their job, which they have to call it, but it's still a ministry, whatever they want to tell you, it's fine. Um, but they are ministering to this, this family and this couple before we ever met them. And that's how God brought us into their lives and them into our lives. But there are some things that we can see from the redoing of this home and and the the renewing of this home. Um, There are some things that we get to look at now that help us in our own lives and in a personal way. Now, I want us to walk through some of those things tonight because what you've seen is you saw a situation, a life situation totally changed in a five-minute video clip. For some of you that were there the whole time, you know it took three weeks and, you know, still working on some things. But the truth is, what you've seen is what God can do with where you are and how he can take you from your current situation and put you in a new situation. That's the reason, that's the illustration that we get from the entire remodel of this place. Is that God can take you from wherever you sit right now in whatever situation you're in right now, and He can clean you up and fix all of that to get you to where you need to be. And if you've seen before and after pictures, I told them I was going to tell their story a little bit tonight. They're okay with that. If you've seen before and after pictures of this place, some of you came out to the reveal and you'd never been there. And it, it was kind of sad for me because, I mean, you walk up and you see this beautiful new home and new grass and all this stuff, and you're thinking, hey, that's neat. You have no idea how neat that was and, and see what God has done in the last three, four weeks in that property. Right, Brandy? It was a little bit different situation. And if you saw, and, and you've seen the video on, on the first part, but you saw that and they were living in a situation where it was just not healthy for them. It was not the best situation for them. But here's why they were there. Because they couldn't get out of it. Because, and Gina talked to Brandy, and they talked, and, and, and just mentioning the fact that Brandy's working nights, taking care of kids, and all that kind of situation, just a total feeling of overwhelmedness, constantly. And I'm wondering how many of you feel that way in your own life. How many of you feel like there's stuff in your life that you can't get rid of, there are things in your life that you would like to take away and do something different with, but you just can't, because you're just overwhelmed with it all. See, because what we've got in our situation is, is there was some stuff that had to be cleaned out in order to make it look like it, do, it looks today. You saw, um, you saw a picture of me driving a bobcat, which, by the way, is a bad idea and it should never happen again. But I, I made it through the three weeks without breaking any huge, expensive equipment. So for me, that's like a, a gift in itself, because usually I break the first thing I touch. But what we got to see is, I mean, you, if you went back to the back of their property, I loved it because when Gina and them went out and checked on your house the first time and they were walking through, scoping it out, they said, well, there's a little pile of trash right behind the swimming pool. Is that not, is that not what y'all said? All right, well, there was a home behind the swimming pool. All right, and all that stuff you saw us putting in that first dumpster was an extra mobile home that had been parted out and left sitting there. You can't make that yard look like it looks now and leave all that stuff in the yard. It's just like the back porch. It's just like different situations they had going on. We had to take some stuff out. And you saw part of the video where I said that we're about to move the house out. And and that was one of the coolest things for me to be a part of because it was a symbol of God taking away the stuff that they didn't need anymore and bringing in all the stuff that they did need. And as I watched that house leave, and it was a long process, much longer than the video (laughs) gives an example of, but as I watched them work on that house and cutting out from under it all the stuff that was connecting it to it and, and watched them 
hook that, that first house to the truck and pull it out. What you see in that is that sometimes in order to be everything God wants you to be, some things have got to go away. It was impossible. It was impossible for us to put a new home there with the old home sitting there. You agree with that? Make sense? It was impossible to move the old home out until we cleaned up around it, until we took off a front deck and a back porch, and until we cleaned up some situations, until we took this part down and moved this out. It was impossible to move that old house out without going underneath it and cutting all the pipes and all the electricity and stuff that connected it to the ground. The old had to go for the new to come. And I want you to hear a scripture passage from me. Randy, I'm skipping all the way to the back, just kind of jack your system up back there. But I just want you to hear this one passage from me. It says this in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Is that, is that in any way kind of what you guys feel now? I mean, they walked in just a little while ago and I said, how do you love it? Oh, we just love it. We're, we're living a new life. And the old life is gone, but the new life has come. Let me explain to you. You can't have the new life until the old life goes away. And if you want to continue to live in the old life, you choose that. But you can't have both. And one of the first things you're going to have to do, and, and for those of you that are living in a situation where it's not as good as you want spiritually, it's not the situation you want for your life. It's not the situation that you want, and you've got sin in your life. We've talked about sin for years. Sin is everything that you do that goes against what God's plan for you was. When you have sin in your life and you don't want to get rid of that, you can't put the new in until you take the old out. That's a scriptural promise for you guys. But what you have to understand is this. The first thing you need to hear from me tonight, no matter where you live and what situation you're in, no matter how much sin you have in you, you must realize and accept that God loves you. And the coolest part about that is I've had people walk in this room and sit down in these chairs and say to the people that, that they came with, they didn't even want to come because they don't feel like they're worth God loving them. And here's the deal. If that's you tonight, you're the person that we're here for. All right, Because you don't go to some churches because they would make you feel like you weren't worthy of God's love. And our promise to you at XL is that there will be zero condemnation of you. There will not be a feeling in you that, I mean, I don't deserve to be here with these people. And you need to understand that the first thing you have to do is accept the fact and realize the fact that God loves you just like you are just where you came from, in every situation, with every mistake, every bad idea you've gone through, everything you've done wrong, all of the baggage that you come in, because why? That builds the story of who you are. We talked about that. All of that with you, sitting in your chair tonight, God loves you just like you are. How do I know that? Because he tells us in his scripture, uh, he says um, in Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8, says, when we were utterly helpless... Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. You need to understand this. Jesus Christ died for you in your current situation. Jesus died for you how you are right now. And the way I explain that, and just the illustration that I was thinking of, some of you deal with like loan officers, bill collectors, people that are calling your house when you can't make those payments so you don't answer those phones anymore, you know? And you get those loan officers and, and they say, yeah, sure, I'll help you, but you got to get a job. And then you say to them, you know what, if I had a job, I wouldn't need your help. Those are the situations that we get in. People are willing to do this for you if you'll do this for them. We have that concept all over our country today. I will love you if you will do this for me. But the truth is, that's not God's love. The truth is that God says he died for you in your current situation. Jesus did not climb up on a cross and die so that you could change and be something different so that then he could offer you grace and peace and love. He knew better. 
Jesus died for you when you had absolutely, positively nothing to give him. And I want you to understand, in your life tonight, you don't have to clean yourself up to come to Jesus. See, that's one of the coolest things about XL as well. Like, I hope and pray that you never sit around on Sunday afternoon going, man, I, I hope I'm dressed right for XL tonight. I think you can tell from around the room, we don't give a rip how you dress. I hope I, I hope I wear the right thing or look the right way or whatever, and we want you to walk in this place be comfortable with who we are and be falling in love with Jesus. And we don't want you to care one thing about what anybody else is looking like or, like or thinking. That's the same kind of love Jesus offers you. Jesus offers you love from dying on the cross for you before you could ever offer him anything. And the reason that I point that out so much is because tonight, Jesus wants a relationship with you before you can offer him anything anyway. He wants you to give him your life. And you have to recognize that. So if you just shut me down now and if the talk goes too long and you decide, hey, it's hot in here, I'm going to go to sleep, you can go to sleep now. But remember, when you leave, you got to know Jesus loves you. No matter what. Jared, my life is a pit. I understand that. I get that. God loves you. Jared, I'm not worthy of that. I understand that. And not one person in the room is worthy of that. God loves you. Jared, I've never done anything in my life to deserve anything. You know what? None of us have. Not one of us has done anything in our world, in our lives, for God to look down on us and go, go, you know what, that guy now, he's really awesome, I'll love him. Not one of us deserves it. That's why he tells us in his scripture that he died before we could offer him anything. You've got to accept and recognize his love. Number two, you've got to accept his love. And this is what I mean by that. Brandy and Tony had to accept our help. And I know, I've been thinking through this as I looked at this, guys. I really can't imagine why you accepted our help. Why you would let a group of people that you didn't know at that time come to you and say, okay, here's the deal. You guys are going to move out of your house for the next two weeks. Let us take over, and we'll be in charge, and then two weeks later, we'll give you something else. I really can't imagine you doing that. I also know that from experience in the neighborhood there that one of your neighbors uh, recommended that you don't do that. And I believe it was a flim-flam operation that we were considering. And I can tell you, if you see me and a group of me coming to tear apart a house, flim flam ain't the only problem you got. Okay, you should understand that. But they had to accept our help. But what they realized and recognized in the situation that they had gotten to is that their situation was so overwhelming to them. I believe this, and, and they, we've talked about this a little bit. But the situation was so overwhelming that they knew that the only thing they could do was accept help because they had to find a way out of that situation. And you know what? For some of you, you're in the same exact boat. You've got something going on in your life that you cannot stop. You've got an addiction in your life that you cannot get over. You've got some kind of pain from your past that you can never, ever, ever let go of. You've got a hatred for somebody somewhere that the enemy will not let you get rid of. And you live with it every day and you can't get past it. Guys, what you've got to do is, number one, recognize that God loves you in your situation. Number two, you've got to accept that love. Because you can recognize that, yeah, I know he loves me, but I don't need any part of it. You can recognize that I know he loves me, but you know what? i got nothing for him and I, got nothing, I don't need anything from him. So what Scripture teaches us in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In accepting God's love, here's the promise. He's never one time ever in anybody's life forced his love on them. I think the story of Paul walking through the desert one time when Jesus met him face to face and changed his life was about the closest thing we've ever seen to that. But scripture teaches us that it is our job to give our lives to Christ and accept his love. And you've got to make that decision in your own life. But there's some things we got to walk through because some of you came in tonight and you felt like you, you don't deserve to be loved. You can't accept his love. You don't even know what his love would look like. You have come to this, the same realization that I think Tony told Gina this at one point in time. Working nights, taking care of my kids, this is just all I could do. And some of you have come to the recognition in your own life that you have accepted 
I don't like where I am. I don't like the situation I'm in, but this is as good as it's ever going to get. And you know what God teaches us in John chapter 10, verse 10? He came to give us a life that is better than any other life than we could ever imagine. And we talk about it all the time and we say, well, God's got a plan that's better than your plan. And you look at me and say, hey, Jerry, this isn't my plan either. Okay, it's not my plan to be living in the situation that I'm in. I didn't choose to be addicted to this drug. I didn't choose to be addicted to this drink. I didn't choose to be in this much trouble. I didn't choose to be in this much debt that I can't get out of. This is not my plan either. Well, the promise is, God's plan is for you to succeed. God's plan. I'll read that. Put John 10, 10 up there, Randy. Whoever's running that. Who's running that back there? Yeah, that's Randy. I just want to read that specifically so they get exactly what that says. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. That is God's plan for you. Now, he does not say, and don't even walk out of here going, hey, the version they said, he's, he's going to make us all rich. No. He says he's going to give you a rich life and a satisfying life. The other version says he's going to give you an abundant life, better than any life that you can imagine. That's his plan for you. But the problem is, you've got so much stuff in you and so much junk hidden down inside of you, you can't allow him to live his plan. Because you're still living on who you used to be and what you used to do and all the past stuff. Because you've never let any of it go. And if you don't let it go, you're carrying it with you. And if you're carrying it with you, you can't replace it with new stuff because you got all the bad stuff with you. Here's the next thing you got to do. you got to deal with the sin that's in your life. And here's how we're going to talk about that. Because here's the deal. What we do at Excel a lot is a lot of the messages we tell you that you should do stuff. But then we don't tell you really specifically how you're to do those things. And I know some of you go home thinking, hey, that's great, Jared. Another great message on what I should do and no direction on how I should do it. I want you to understand that you have to deal with the sin in your life. They had a, you saw it on there. There was a, a metal, there was an old shed in the back of their property that became metal during the process. And um, we'll just go ahead and say this. It was full of some stuff. Wasn't it, Randy? Wasn't it, Tony? There was a few things in there. 400 million tons of stuff. In this shed. Now if you walk in that shed, you have all the new stuff, the whole new shed, the whole shed is newly done, and the inside of it is organized where you can find things. And chances are nothing's going to bite you when you go in there. It's a beautiful thing. But here's the situation. That shed couldn't be used today if the old stuff hadn't been taken out of it. It just couldn't be done. Your life cannot be everything you've called it, that God's called it to be and God wants it to be until you get the stuff out of it that is getting in his way. It's just not going to be done. He teaches us clearly that he comes in and takes over and makes us new when all the other stuff is, get, is gotten rid of. But the coolest part is he walks through that process. First thing you've got to do with your sin is confess it to him. What does that mean? That means tonight. You go home, and you sit in, in a room, someplace by yourself. I don't care if you're responsible for all nine children. Put them all outside. Let them play in the rain. Doesn't matter tonight. That's not on video, is it? That's on video. Tonight, you go home, and you say to God, God, I want to accept your love for me, and I want to confess my sin to you. That's as simple and specific as I can get on how you deal with this. And, and here's what that verse says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. If we claim we have no sin, we are fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. First of all, if you're sitting here tonight going, hey, I've got all kinds of junk in my life and, and all kinds of problems, but it's really not a sin issue for me and I'm okay, you're fooling yourself. Because that's where we sit today. The majority of us sit here knowing that we've got stuff in our life we can't get rid of. So tonight, you must confess that. You must stand before your God and say, God, and if you don't have a relationship with him, my suggestion in a few minutes is going to be you start that before you leave here tonight. 
Do you accept God's love for you before you get out of this building tonight? And then you start the process of confessing your sin to him. Number two thing you got to do is you got to move away from it. Some of you have, have confessed the same sin 4,000 times. Some of you have confessed those sins and you don't want to move away from them. But I want to show you something in Scripture. When it talks about the word repent, it says this in Acts 3, 19 and 20. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins be wiped away. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. And he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. Let me ask you this question. Times of refreshment. Can anybody, you don't have to raise your hand, but could you use one of those? Could you use a time? where it's just about rest. I got to go to the beach this week for Thanksgiving, and there was about nine minutes in the entire trip that it was a refreshing time. You know, because on vacation, I take my children, so therefore there is no vacation. You know, yeah, we understand that. Still good times, beach times with the kids, all that. There's still no refreshment. But here's what Scripture says. When you repent, the, de the ve very definition of the word repent is, or you're going this way, you turn around and you go the other direction. You must move away from the stuff. When we cleaned out their shed and we cleaned out the stuff around their home, you notice that we didn't leave it in piles of, of garbage bags or in, in storage sheds. We didn't leave it all in the shed. We took it out and did other things with it. We didn't leave it there because it's not to be gone back to. It's time to move forward. In your life, the sin issues that you have, when you confess those to God and you accept that he's forgiven those from, for you, it is time to move forward from those. It is not time to go back to that. And I know a lot of times in our lives, we, will, we go back to what's comfortable. So we'll do the best we can and we'll live out the best we can and we'll, we'll change as much as we can. But when it gets tough and the, times, the stressful times hit, we go directly back to what we know has always been comfortable. That means in your life, your goal is to give your life to Christ, accept his love for you, confess your sin to him, and then move away from it permanently. How are you going to do that? You've got to get some help. You've got to have help. No, Jared, I can handle this on my own. No, you can't. You just can't. You can say whatever you want to say, but you can't. I think what Brandy and Tony recognized when, when they were approached that they knew that they could use our help. And they knew that their situation and life situation could be better if we were allowed to help them. But you need to understand in your personal life, the tough stuff that you go through, the commitments, the, the, the addictions that you have, the things that you just can't let go of, you must find help for those. There is a reason that AA is successful. There is a reason that Weight Watchers is successful. There is a reason that all of these groups, and we talked about one of them tonight with just a, just a few people outside, dealing with all kinds of issues. There is a reason that a group helps you get through those. Number one is accountability. They're going to support you, but they're going to make, make sure you do what you say you're going to do. When you, when you stand up tomorrow morning and say, I'm changing my life, I'm giving up my addiction, and you say it to no one but yourself, I can promise you, you won't make it past lunch. Because nobody cares but you, because nobody knows but you. And you are the easiest person in your life to let down. I mean, I'll let myself down in a heartbeat. If I commit that I'm going to do something, and I'm the only one I tell, I'm thinking, I think I'll change that. Okay, let's do something different. I'll forgive me, let's move on. But when you begin to tell other people what you're going to do and call on them for their accountability and their help, that makes a difference. But you've got to have help. And then last thing is you've got to deal with the sin that's been in your life. Some of your sin, you'll be able to go home tonight and say, God, I confess this to you, let's move on, and he will take that away from you totally and completely. And then some of it is part of the repentance process. You'll have to go to people and deal with people. And some sins that you've committed, you won't be able to move on from until you deal with those people. Because he just won't let you. He'll forgive you. He'll clean you and, and process that whole thing. 
but he'll call you to deal with certain people in certain situations. So if you're ready to do that, then tonight is, is basically this situation. What God is calling you to do is accept that he loves you. Period. With that, what you do from that is you confess your sin to him. God, I know without a doubt that you love me, and I appreciate that. I praise you for that, and here's what I've done wrong, and here's who I've become. Make me something different. That's your confession statement tonight. Then you repent from those sins and commit to him that you're going to do the best job you can do of turning around and going a different direction. In that process, you deal with whatever he calls you to deal with, and you find some help to get you further down the road than you've ever been before. What does that lead you to? What is the specific step to that? Tomorrow you live a whole new life. Because here's the deal. If you, if you accept God's love, you confess your sin, you repent of your sin, you change all these things and do all these things, and then you're not different, there's a problem there. But here's what he says, and I'll read this to you again, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, and a new life has begun. Because my goal for you is to have a new life. My goal for you is to be able to turn in all your stuff and have God replace it all with who he is. And the truth about Brandy and Tony and their children is that they've got a new home. In a sense, they've got a new life to go through. But what they do with it is totally, completely up to them. Yeah, Gina's going to call them every day and make sure they're doing it right. Not really, guys. What they do with all of that stuff is totally up to them. And the truth is, tonight, what God offers you in your own life with all the sin and all the junk and all the crud and the trash that you've got built up, what he promises you tonight is if you'll give it to him, he'll take it away and give you a whole new life. What you do with that is totally and completely up to you. What we're going to do is the band's going to come play one more song for us very quickly. And um, you don't have to come quickly. Just come on up. You know. What they're going to do, though, is as they're playing this song, if you need to deal with your relationship with Christ, you need to come meet us in the back corner over here. And just take that time. Begin to pray for the people around you. Those of, the, those of you that know Jesus, be, just begin to pray for the people around you. Make sure every person in this room understands who Christ is and what God's called us to do. But if you're one of those people that you walked in here tonight knowing that God couldn't love you, knowing that he couldn't possibly care about you, you need to understand tonight that that's wrong. And you need to have an understanding that God does love you, and you need to accept that love for him tonight. Whatever that takes in you. We'll walk you through how to confess all those sins. We'll walk you through how to take the junk out and put the new in. We'll walk you through all of that. If you're willing to look at God for who he really is and accept the fact that he loves you tonight. As they play, you deal with that, and I'll be back to close out in just a few minutes. Guys, I just want to thank you for being with us tonight and being a part of what God's doing. But I want to encourage you, if you're going through something that you can't handle on your own, we want to help you with that. God wants to help you with that. He wants to give you a new life. We want to help you make that step. So whatever that takes, find us tonight. We'll deal with whatever we got to deal with to, to introduce you to the God that's got an incredible plan for your life. I want to pray for you, then I'll make some announcements. We'll get out of here. God, we love you. And we thank you that tonight is about you. Even when we talk about you changing our lives and doing great things for us and seeing great and mighty things happen, God, it's still about you. And we pray with all of our hearts, God, that, that you and you alone would get the glory and the praise of our lives. Father, I pray tonight for any person in this room that's just dealing with the stuff that they can't get past and get rid of. Lord, I pray that you'll show them freedom tonight. You'll show them that you've got a plan for them. And it involves them being free from the junk of their past. And it involves them being free to live the, the life that you've called them to live in the future, God. And we trust you completely with their lives tonight, Lord. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.